from the Longhorn Radio Network, the University of Texas at Austin, this is Forum. Hoover's uh, actions and uh, acts and omissions during the Kennedy administration uh, to meet the uh, illegal uh, the elements of, of treason as it, as it uh, was statutorily written at that time. Mark North, Austin, Texas lawyer and historian and author of Act of Treason. Johnson was a man who was uh, very apathetic towards prosecution of uh, organized crime, had killed legislation in the Senate. He was associated with a man named uh, Halfin prior to that time who had ties in with the um, Marcello organization. Um, Johnson was, I think, it was simply a man who saw the mafia as, as probably just one more, um, uh, one more constituency. Um, but I think that um, immediately after the assassination, um, the position, the power position he was in, he had to, like just like the Warren Commission, had become uh, very suspicious of, of Hoover. This is Olive Graham. The topic today on Forum is a recently published book entitled Act of Treason. Author Mark North examined the connections between J. Edgar Hoover and the events leading to and surrounding the John F. Kennedy assassination. He arrives at a damning conclusion, that the director of the FBI withheld information that could have prevented the assassination of President Kennedy. Mr. North explains why he has researched this topic at this time. With every major um, historical figure and, and event, um, uh, history uh, takes its takes takes its course, and ultimately you have a um, uh, more or less a, a garnering or a marshaling of the evidence that builds up in the historical record over a period of time, and then ultimately enough pieces are um, uh, 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 become apparent to where you, you have an overall picture that develops, and that's that's what's happened now with uh, with, with uh, my research in act, act of treason. It's essentially history catching up with, with J. Edgar Hoover. What were your major sources? Of information. Oh, uh, of course, there was the uh, the Warren Commission um, uh, proceedings, and then the uh, of course the House Select Committee uh, proceedings, and there was a whole um, wealth of material that spun off those into various books that people wrote, and um, the Freedom of Information Act, uh, the government documents, FBI documents that were that were pried out by those uh, various people. Um, and then one of the main things that I I did in in, in my research, in, in addition to that, was to assemble. The um, uh, in effect, the context it's like, it's like the it's like the context of the crime. Uh, I went in. I, what I did was created a timeline, and I went into the record and I assembled not only these things I previously mentioned, but also um, the, um, the 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 daily activities of J. Edgar Hoover in terms of his writings, his speeches, uh, his interviews, um, um, uh, excerpts from his uh, his monthly essays in the FBI Law Enforcement Bulletin, um, his appropriation hearings testimony. Uh, annually, um, uh, and then also uh, simply analyzing the uh, mainstream newspapers of the day um, um, and uh, and periodicals and so on, where you would uh, track track the activities of the man and uh, this conflict that he had uh, with, with John Kennedy uh, over the issue of uh, Hoover's retirement, and then uh, things of that, things of that nature, really across the full spectrum of uh, film, documentary, uh, things of that nature. When you got to know this person. Was he someone that you finally grew to admire? Well, I think uh, Hoover is the, the classic uh, case of the man, uh, the individual who obtains, uh, in his early and middle years, he does uh, some, some good work, but then as his power grows and he, he moves towards the end of his career, um, he uh, becomes absolutely determined to stay in place. And then uh, with the... Um, uh, with the election of John Kennedy for the first time, Hoover was going to have to face uh, compulsory retirement at age 70, uh, and the only way to save himself was through a, a, a retirement waiver via executive order from, from John Kennedy, and, and uh, Kennedy had made it clear that that was not going to happen. Um, and so uh, uh, you have a situation where uh, Hoover became desperate, and, and he uh, simply turned to the power of his own agency to perpetuate himself at, uh, at all costs, and th that resulted in the... Uh, in the death of John Kennedy. Your thesis or your charge is treason. That, that's a high crime. Uh, absolutely, the, the, the highest. It's um, uh, Hoover's uh, actions and uh, acts and omissions during the Kennedy administration uh, to meet the, uh, the legal uh, the elements of, of treason as it as it's, uh, was statutorily written at that time. Those charges are seldom brought, though. 
Um, that's that's true. It's a very very grave crime. But um, it, simply put, uh, um, Hoover uh, had a, a statutory duty, both as FBI director and as U.S. citizen, to warn uh, Secret Service uh, of uh, potential threats uh, against the against the president um, or assassination plots uh, in the making against the president. Uh, he had that prior knowledge through the mafia surveillance uh, product that he had, the illegal mafia surveillance product, uh, withheld that from Secret Service, um, realizing that after the fact that uh, he would have in place uh, a man, uh, in Lyndon Johnson, whom he could uh, um, uh, manipulate. Uh, and then, in fact, uh, Kennedy was killed by the, uh, the Southern U.S. Mafia. And then after the fact, uh, Johnson was placed in control, I mean, I'm sorry, Hoover was placed in control of the, uh, the Warren Commission, and, uh, and Johnson was forced to acquiesce. And... Uh, um, Hoover simply manipulated both Johnson and the commission into the lone nut thesis. And, and in, uh, on May 8, 1964, uh, Johnson, in a public ceremony, just days before Hoover was to testify before the Warren Commission, um, publicly waived Hoover's um, compulsory retirement, uh, calling him a hero to millions of Americans. So no one rounded up the usual suspects, so to speak, uh, after the assassination. No, what happened, it's really an interesting uh, study in, in power. You have the initial response of the Dallas and the local authorities, uh, this reaction, and then you have the, uh, the, the uh, Hoover moving in the after, virtually the afternoon of the assassination uh, before Oswald was charged with, even, with, any, with anything and simply saying, uh, already uh, saying in internal memos that Oswald was guilty and he was just a slow nut. Uh, and then um, on Saturday, the very next day, you have a re- um, uh, when Hoover is formally placed in, in, in control by Johnson, uh, you have a um, stifling of the investigation in Dallas, uh, all the physical evidence being flown to Washington, D.C. Um, uh, part of the, the, the thing that facilitated this was the fact that the, um, at the time, the uh, Dallas uh, district attorney was a former FBI agent, a man named Henry Wade. The state, uh, Texas attorney general was uh, a former FBI agent, Wagner Carr. Um, and of course, Hoover and Johnson had lived across the street from each other for 19 years. They'd been, they had a, a truly symbiotic uh, relationship um, by that point. Um, and uh, so the power simply flowed down from the top and uh, um, uh, contained the matter. Well, who were those forces who tried to see Oswald as part of a conspiracy and not a lone nut? Well, the, what happened with the with the Warren Commission is, is you had it. It seemed to f- shake out along on two lines. There seemed to be one group that was pushing for the truth, and then you had another group that was absolutely convinced that uh, Oswald was nothing more than this, as they uh, termed it in Congress. Uh, the conservatives in Congress termed it this this kill crazy communist, and uh, so their job was to uh, make sure that the uh, that the, 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 the public understood that, the, that uh, the president had been killed by a uh, by this uh, this this pro Marxist uh, uh, pro Castroite leftist who was seeking to do what as a result of his act? Uh, <clears throat> well, Oswald, I, I don't believe uh, shot anyone. I think Oswald was simply manipulated by the, um, by the Southern Mar- the Mar- Marcello organization. Uh, in the months prior to the assassination, uh, when he was in New Orleans, uh, he was clearly, clearly manipulated by um, a former FBI agent um, uh, named Guy Bannister and another individual who worked with him named David Ferry um, in their attempts to uh, uh, ferret out um, uh, people they, they perceived to be pro rights in the New Orleans area. And um, Oswald was seen in this light, uh, perceived in this light by the Marcello, people related to the Marcello organization, and he'd seen that he could be used um, as because he had this public image. And so he was simply maneuvered, and uh, um, at the time of the assassination, he was sitting on the, the second floor of the uh, school book depository eating his, eating his lunch, uh, as all the evidence suggests that he was. Uh, and then the uh, Kennedy was killed by uh, uh, the uh, contract killers, mafia contract killers. Who were able to cover their tracks pretty well. Hmm? Well, uh, one of the things that I, that I uh, point out in, in, in Act of Treason, I, I drew together the um, um, uh, material from, from a variety of sources, uh, eyewitness um, testimony, people um, running up the grassy knoll immediately after the assassination. Um, uh, at least uh, two people saw somebody uh, uh, running away towards across the, the, the railroad, railroad tracks. Um, there was a man confronted by, behind the grassy knoll area both before the assassination and after the assassination, um, uh, masquerading as a Secret Service agent, had credentials, uh, the, the whole appearance. Um, there were people uh, who also uh, saw people uh, uh, fleeing the back of the school book depository moments after the assassination. Um, and there was also a man who was tied in with the... Uh, Southern U.S. Mafia, um, who was uh, actually arrested outside the, uh, just in Daly Plaza, just adjacent to the school book depository uh, moments after the assassination, but um, had an alias and uh, was subsequently um, 
uh, subsequently released. Are you charging that Hoover's motives were private, or did he also have some political vision that he was supporting? Well, uh, Hoover, had, of course, had built the bureau, and he had, uh, the time Kennedy, by the time Kennedy was elected, uh, Hoover had been in uh, uh, well over, he'd been in charge well over 35 years. And um, he had uh, seen himself, um, in effect, he be, in his eyes, he had become the bureau. And all of a sudden, he was confronted with this president who, uh, in his eyes, was this um, uh, immoral, uh, decadent, uh, indecisive liberal uh, who was going to replace him and uh, replace him with a man of his own choosing, uh, just as Kennedy. Kennedy essentially inherited a Cold War bureaucracy. And he, as I point out in, 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 the, in the book, uh, he uh, systematically set about replacing the top people at um, Secret Service, CIA, Bureau of Narcotics, Immigration, Naturalization, uh, you name it, just about. But the one agency he could not Im- impact uh, in that regard was uh, the FBI because Hoover had the, the private files on Kennedy and uh, Hoover knew, I mean, Kennedy knew that um, that the only way to go was to let um, federal statute uh, retire uh, retire Hoover. Um, Congress themselves uh, went along with this. In uh, July 62, they introduced legislation um, for, to, to uh, uh, obtain vice, advice and consent. They w- also realized that Hoover, the situation had gotten out of control and Hoover was simply too powerful, so they called for... Um, advice and consent, uh, term limitation, no reappointment, severe restriction on uh, length of term um, with an eye towards regaining control of, uh, of that agency. Even given his power, can we look at the FBI as, as a kind of backwater of some kind, or was crime somehow in our national politics at such a level that, that he became important? My uh, my guess is that in all likelihood, um, just as the U.S. military used um, uh, the mafia in uh, Italy in the latter part of World War II um, to help them in their in their efforts, um, uh, uh, Hoover very likely uh, relied on uh, people within the mafia to supply with him with information about people he considered to be a threat to the nation, uh, leftists or uh, people he considered to be overly liberal. Can we say that the Kennedys underestimated Hoover? I think very, 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 very radically underestimated him. Um, they perceived, I think Robert Kennedy, because of his uh, age and experience and the position he was placed in, uh, he perceived Hoover as simply a, a man who was uh, bordering, bordering on uh, senility, as, as, as Robert Kennedy would say, he had his good days and his bad days. And uh, simply, did not, of course, he didn't know anything about the, um, the covert uh, mob surveillance program that Hoover had in full swing uh, already by the time the Kennedys were elected, a uh, program called El Sur. And so he was simply, um, uh, the Kennedys, were, both Kennedys were simply uh, uh, blindsided by, um, uh, by the mafia because of, because of Hoover's uh, withholding the critical data from Secret Service. Johnson, on the other hand, was completely in the know? I don't think Johnson knew, had prior knowledge of the, at least what, what we know so far, I don't think that he had prior knowledge of the uh, assassination plan. Johnson was a man who was uh, very apathetic towards prosecution of uh, organized crime, had killed legislation in the Senate. He was associated with a man named uh, Halfen prior to that time who had ties in with the um, Marcello organization. Um, Johnson was, I think, was simply a man who saw the mafia as, as probably just one more, um, uh, one more constituency. Um, but I think that um, immediately after the assassination, um, the position, that power, power position he was in, he had to, like just like the Warren Commission, had become uh, very suspicious of, of Hoover. Uh, for, for instance, on November 28, 63, uh, the very day that Johnson made the decision to form the Warren Commission, he, uh, Johnson received uh, intelligence uh, cable out of London um, uh, linking uh, Jack Ruby directly with uh, Santa Strafficana, and the uh, mafia, Florida mafia uh, boss. And um, simultaneously, that cable was sent to uh, Hoover and his people. And within hours, Hoover had a cable, I mean, a, a memo over to Johnson saying, uh, don't believe this man, he's, he's just a psychotic. But the man who was making the charge, uh, John Wilson, uh, his name was actually found in Ruby's uh, uh, notebook when Ruby was arrested. So things of this nature, um, uh, and Johnson's own sources, uh, <clears throat> of course, Johnson well knew that, that, um, that, that Kennedy was going to retire Hoover, and he knew that... Um, uh, Hoover hated the Kennedys, uh, the political and uh, uh, personal uh, uh, war that they had going on. Who were Hoover's compatriots? Well, uh, the number two man in the FBI, Clyde Tolson, uh, Hoover's lifetime companion, uh, as he was, as he's been described by numerous um, um, agents and, uh, and people who've looked at the FBI over the years, he was a, a hands-on type manager who simply saw everything that Hoover saw. Uh, he was his, like his, the, the equivalent of like your the assistant manager type uh, uh, role. Um, there was also a man named Courtney Evans who acted as liaison to the Kennedys during the administration, um, but uh, 
Courtney Evans was the man in charge of what the FBI called the Special Investigative Division, which uh, monitored all of the mob surveillance, uh, the illegal mob surveillance programs. Um, so it seems inescapable that, that he had would had to have known uh, also that the uh, mafia had had gotten fed up and uh, were planning to um, uh, to try and kill Kennedy. Was there anything that the FBI did that was close enough to to Congress? Did they somehow support? legislation called in to testify, that sort of thing? Well, uh, uh, of course, the power of uh, Hoover in, in the House, U.S. House, was very um, uh, was very strong. And in fact, when the legislation was introduced in uh, um, in uh, July uh, 62 for to govern uh, Hoover's replacement, uh, it was it was in the House where it stalled uh, because of Hoover's power. I have no doubt um, to keep it from becoming all the Senate passed it, but the House it stalled in the House. Um, Hoover certainly had his friends every year, and his, his appropriations budget would simply go um, up and up and up. There was never any uh, question. Uh, I think a man named Rooney, I think, was the man who oversaw appropriations, and Hoover would supply him with um, FBI personnel to help him uh, um, uh, interpret, quote-unquote, uh, the FBI's needs. Have you found, since you've written the book, uh, support in unusual places or from where you expected it? Well, uh, from from um, what I would term to be uh, serious researchers within the, um, the assassination community, I've, I've, I've uh, found support, um, and uh, of course, in uh, the, from the area of like the former FBI agents, there is uh, there has been some uh, um, hostility. The problem with the agent uh, generation of agents who were, were of Hoover's time is that uh, they're uh, for the most part very loyal men. I think for the most part they were they're, uh, they were simply uh, good good people, but they. Um, the problem is they have to somehow, somehow now come to grips with the fact that Hoover was uh, willing to mis- uh, go to any lengths to, to misuse his own people in order to perpetuate himself, and they, the FBI has been uh, hamstrung by that, by that legacy. You used the term assassination community. A rather ominous term, I might add. Uh, well, I mean the um, uh, people such as um, uh, David Scheim, Contract on America, uh, John Davis, uh, Mafia Kingfish, um, s- some of the other um, people who have um, really looked at this thing seriously and, and have followed the, lead, followed the lead of the House Select Committee on Assassinations, uh, their research uh, in terms of the uh, complicity of the mafia. How much of a smoking gun do you offer readers? Uh, a paper trail, I can tell. Mm-hmm. Uh, but what else? Well, uh, one of the things that I that I uh, d- discovered was this um, near near dual uh, development of information uh, as a result of the uh, the Bobby Baker investigation under under Hoover. You have, uh, for instance, you have a situation where um, in the months prior to the assassination, as Warren Commission no doubt uh, knew, um, Jack Ruby was making numerous calls to uh, out to Las Vegas to uh, talk to a man at a place called Thunderbird Hotel. And when the uh, Bobby Baker um, uh, mafia scandal broke in the fall of 63, um, they uh, discovered that Bobby Baker, this was Johnson's uh, close, closest protege, uh, had in, uh, was in fact uh, um, closely involved with men who in turn were involved with running the Thunderbird Hotel, uh, so it's front, front men for the, uh, for the mafia. And um, this sort of thing, um, <clears throat> these kind of parallels, um, I uncovered the uh, what was known as the uh, Beckley indictment also in mid-61 when Robert Kennedy um, in a, a huge indictment, uh, attempted to break up the Marcello organization's um, off-track um, bookmaking apparatus in the southern U.S. Uh, this was a, a, if you will, a linking device between um, the Marcello organization, the Tropicana organization, the East Coast uh, Mafia. Um, in fact, uh, for instance, Jimmy Hoffa, who was a man very close to um, the southern U.S. Mafia, um, uh, discovered links between men indicted in the Marcello gambling apparatus uh, and um, uh, an individual uh, named Gilbert Beckley actually operating out of a Teamster-controlled house in Miami where Hoffa himself kept an apartment. Uh, I also discovered you have the, um, um, in May 62, you have the FBI electronic surveillance picking up um, a death threat, a mafia death, Marcello organization mafia death threat against uh, Robert Kennedy because of his war on the mob and then within a uh, calling for his assassination with high explosives and then within a matter of just a few weeks uh, Hoffa himself uh, is also talking about having Robert Kennedy killed with uh, high explosives uh, and, and I believe that these people in turn went to uh, Traficana and, and Marcello in the summer of 62 and said that we've had it um, as, as, as Hoffa said um, uh, Bobby Kennedy has got to go and uh, so these mafia leaders, southern mafia leaders, were more astute, and uh, they realized that it, the way to kill the dog, you don't cut off the tail, you cut off its head. And um, 
So I think all of these things, um, they form a mosaic. And, and when you look at them in this timeline sense, in a real-time sense, um, Hoover's uh, treason becomes obvious. For those who don't agree with your thesis, how do they or have they tried to account for those pieces of hard evidence that you can offer? Well, they're, they're in addition to the, they're at, at this point now, like almost 90 percent of the, the American people uh, realize that, uh, that there was a conspiracy. Um, you have a fringe element that's still clinging to the uh, the Warren Commission findings, although that was formally, dis- formally dismissed in 79. Um, and then, of course, you have the uh, the intelligence community, the former officers, who the, the, the loyalty uh, towards the image, uh, the, the public image uh, rhetoric of Hoover. Um, then there's also within the assassination research community, you have a um, the, uh, the only thing I can think to call them really, I guess, is the the, the macro assassinationists uh, who who believe that there was this massive uh, mil- military industrial complex CIA oriented type conspiracy, of the cons- almost a conspiracy of thousands, if you will, sitting down in in uh, rooms and, and um, almost synchronizing their watches, deciding how they're going to get rid of John Kennedy. And those, those things uh, are simply unrealistic. You, you, you're not going to have a conspiracy of that nature and that size that's going to be contained over the years. So some of them aren't very happy with, with what I've done, but uh, I came into this as an historian and a, uh, and a lawyer uh, uh, trying to put together an objective, comprehensive historical analysis, and uh, that's, what, that's what active treason is. Well, at your conclusion... What do you ask of the reader, the nation? Do you want some kind of moral resolution to all of this? Uh, absolutely. I think this thing has, has, has haunted us for so long, and it's, it's just been a, uh, a millstone around our necks because of, this, uh, because of the protection of Hoover's, as I've discovered. What needs to be done is um, the, um, with the, uh, this, thing, this thing stalled because, uh, of course, Hoover kept it bottled up till uh, May 72 when he died. Then you, he was followed by, by Gerald Ford, who was the FBI's uh, um, informant on the Warren Commission, their staunchest defender. Then you have the anomaly of Carter when things start to unravel. In 79, you have the House Select Committee findings when they formally found conspiracy, pointed the finger more or less at the mafia, and uh, talked about the fact that Hoover had withheld all this surveillance data from Secret Service, turned it over to the Justice Department, the FBI, and to proceed from there uh, with, with uh, investigation you know, and, and indictments. And instead, they turned around and kicked it right back in the face of Congress, said, no, you're wrong. The Warren Commission is right. And then we had the chance election of uh, Ronald Reagan, uh, who was a two-term uh, president, who was, as has been documented, a former FBI informant from the 1950s. And he simply was, br- I'm sure, sure, was briefed on this matter and just decided to let, uh, in his mind, let sleeping dogs lie, uh, probably thought it was probably there was a man who thought very highly of Hoover. So that's why this thing is stalled. So what needs to be done now is Bush needs to come forward and uh, the Justice Department and the FBI, and they need to acknowledge the fact that, that this happened and so that the American people can put this uh, behind them. And the uh, Justice Department needs to proceed with what, the, what they can in the area of uh, uh, investigation and indictments. Um, well, they, they also need to call upon the American people to um, uh, make a distinction between Hoover's public rhetoric and his public image uh, and, and what his, uh, his true personality was like and what he was actually doing behind the scenes to the American people all this time in order to perpetuate himself. And then finally, um, uh, symbolically, what we need to do um, that I think would be a good, very good starting point would be to have uh, J. Edgar Hoover's name removed from the FBI building uh, in Washington, D.C. Um, it's, it's really... Uh, Anachronistic. It, it sits there, and it's it's so so out of step with, uh, with present day reality and, and 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 the man that it needs it needs to go. You mentioned that he found uh, John Kennedy to be immoral as a liberal. Could you say that J. Edgar Hoover was a moral man inside of his own parameters? Uh, Hoover's uh, personal life was very different from the, the public public image of that. Uh, there's no doubt. Uh, Hoover was at the racetracks every weekend. Um, it was a man who drank daily. He, uh, all indications are, uh, he uh, maintained a uh, very discreet, um, um, uh, lifelong uh, monogamous relationship with the number two man in the FBI, Clyde Tolson. Th- but the odd thing about this is not is it, this is not a statement about uh, Hoover's uh, sexual preference or any sort of moral statement about that. Uh, rather, it's a situation where Hoover was condemning uh, John Kennedy over his uh, adultery. Uh, this a married a man, a married man who was the, involved in all this philandering, and that seemed to be a, a great source of concern to Hoover and, and a basis for Hoover to, by which to condemn Kennedy. Yet Hoover himself um, was living in, in, in this very rather unusual relationship. Um, Hoover was, uh, I think, was just a political opportunist. Uh, he would do whatever uh, would advance uh, uh, himself of the, of the agency in a, in a safe manner. At the end, you cite uh, Robert Bly and Iron John. Mm. Does the Kennedy image 
somehow need therapy? I think that uh, what uh, Bly had touched on there was, as he, as he pointed out and uh, he encountered in his lectures, uh, just as uh, hero, uh, Hoover was this uh, hero to the people of his generation of the, of the, of the uh, middle right and far right, John Kennedy was also a hero to the people of his generation in, in, in the middle and left. And um, it, it's, it's um, a, a case where um, the, the image of, of Kennedy as, as a political uh, leader and as a, a hero role model for his time has been maligned. Um, well, idols do sometimes have clay feet. That's true. Uh, Kennedy, just as uh, uh, in a year, year and a half ago, uh, um, uh, Kennedy's shortcomings were were um, um, made public in uh, the, the, movie, the book um, A Question of Character, talking about John Kennedy's personal life. Um, now, too, uh, uh, history has to also has to catch up with J. Edgar Hoover, and, and that's what it's that's what's happened here. Do you expect other? historians, other authors, to take your thesis and run, or do you feel that you've done a definitive job? I feel that uh, that actual treason does provide the answers to the larger questions uh, involving uh, surrounding the Kennedy assassination. Um, my, my hope is is that uh, this uh, uh, that this book will be used as a uh, in, in, in the context of historical analysis, whereby people can can go on from there, and we can perhaps get the answers to uh, the, um, the, the, the 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 smaller questions in terms of uh, the actual mechanics of the manipulation of Oswald, and uh, uh, perhaps the names of trigger men and how the actual contract was uh, put together and carried out. When it comes to our perception of the FBI, the executive, the Congress. Can we anticipate something like this ever happening again, or have doors been sealed and and this will never recur? I think that um, uh, Congress moved, of course, after Hoover died and then Tolson died uh, a couple of years after that. Uh, <clears throat> Congress moved uh, uh, fairly quickly. They had the FBI oversight uh, hearings uh, into the FBI record-keeping systems. Uh, there were there were structural changes in the FBI, and then of course. Um, the uh, term limitation on uh, uh, FBI director is, is much uh, uh, is much smaller now, and a figure figure like Hoover evolves over over time, over a long period of time, and with the advice and consent controls that the uh, Congress now has, I don't think we're likely to see a repetition of a of a messianic figure like uh, Hoover in in the FBI. I don't know about other agencies or other uh, other doings of government. The guest on Forum has been historian and lawyer Mark North, author of Act of Treason, published by Carolyn Graff Publishers Incorporated. The views expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect the views of the University of Texas at Austin or this station. Technical producer for Forum, Cliff Hargrove. Production assistant, Mike Lee. I'm your producer and host, Olive Graham. Cassette copies of this program are available and may be purchased by writing Forum Cassettes, Longhorn Radio Network, Communication Building B, UT Austin, Austin, Texas, 78712. That's Forum Cassettes, Longhorn Radio Network, Communication Building B, UT Austin, Austin, Texas, 78712. From the Center for Telecommunication Services, the University of Texas at Austin, this is the Longhorn Radio Network. This week on Forum, author Mark North. Hoover's uh, actions and uh, acts and omissions during the Kennedy administration uh, meet the, uh, the legal uh, the elements of, of treason as it was as uh, statutorily written at that time. The author of Act of Treason, this week on Forum.